Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is called Dark Acid Arp in Pigments, and this one's kind of weird because it kind of took on a life of its own and ended up being some type of industrial dark acidy arp kind of thing. So with that being said, this is the patch. <laughs> Alright, that was a patch. If you like it, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So let's dive into this thing because there's some cool stuff happening in the synth and also outside of the synth that kind of ties everything up together. And I kind of wanted to show that at the end of this once we talk about the patch itself. So with that being said, this patch here is going to be using Analog 1, Analog 2, and the Utility Engine. So for now, let's turn off the Utility, let's turn, let's turn off Analog 2, and then also the Sequencer because this is using the Arpeggiator with, located within the Sequencer tab. So let's dive into this. So for analog one, we're just gonna be using one saw wave here, volume all the way at zero, and then this is gonna be pitched down one octave here. And we're gonna have some voices at eight, and then the detune is gonna be 1.05%, and then stereo all the way to the right, 100%. So this engine here is gonna be going to filter number one, which is over here. So this one is gonna be the multi-mode. So let's press a note. Now we see that this is getting modulated. So what is it getting modulated by? We can see envelope two. So if we select envelope two, we can see what's all getting changed here. So we can see the filter one cutoff right here. So we can basically drag this envelope two onto this cutoff and that's gonna be how we're gonna modulate it. And we can see the exact value 0.68, which if we go over to the cutoff here, when we put our mouse over here, we see envelope two 0.68. So two different ways to get to the modulation amount, but that's basically gonna be the amount. Now for the cutoff, it's gonna be 401 Hertz. Now when we hit a note, it's gonna open up that filter, open up the filter, and then it's gonna kind of close according to the envelope two shape. So if we, if we go to envelope two, we can see that the attack is one millisecond, decay 1.53, no sustain, that's why it just kind of closes once we hit the note. It's just gonna close no matter if we hold down the note or not. And then the release time is gonna be 100 milliseconds. So that's gonna be that modulation amount. Now that's basically analog one into filter number one. Okay, cool. Now analog number two, let's take a look and see what's happening on that. Let's turn this on, turn off analog one and play a note. So that's gonna be the acidy type of sound. And this is gonna be using the new filter that came with Pigments 4, this MS-20 here, which is really cool. So for the oscillators for engine number two, we're gonna be using a saw wave and another saw wave. So two saw waves for this one here. The first one is gonna be at all the way to the top at zero dB. The second one is gonna be at minus 5.61, and then the chorus is gonna be up one octave, so 12 semitones. And we're also gonna have unison on this as well, so three voices of unison, the detune 2.13, and then stereo all the way to the top. Now we can see the analog engine two is going to filter two by this knob here. So let's go to filter two and see what's happening here. So we have this MS-20, which is a fantastic filter, especially if you're doing kind of like acidy techno kind of stuff here, because this resonance knob is really cool. So when we hit a note here, we can see this is getting modulated as well. And it's getting modulated by envelope two. Like we talked about before, we click on the envelope two and then we can see filter two cutoff is also getting modulated 0.17, a slow, a little bit less amount than the first one, but it's still getting modulated because you want to find that spot in your sound that kind of has that acid type of spot and then set your cutoff there which in this case is 242 hertz and then kind of modulate accordingly so we can see this orange line once we hover over this little pie right here so it's just a little bit of modulation there and the resonance is quite high at 0.664 and that's this little peak right here and that's really going to give that emphasis here so low pass 24 on this one and then uh, i didn't mention it before for the first one but that's low pass 24 so a little different slope there now with these two mixed together with both filters So kind of cool little sound there. Now the utility engine, let's take a look at that. Let's turn these two engines off and let's look at the utility engine. So what's happening here, the first one here on this, uh, this noise one here, we have just white noise here and this is gonna be on random. So we're just getting a little bit of random stuff right here happening, just kind of nice. This is also going to filter number one, which is kind of doing the same thing as uh, engine one is doing, 
But the cool part, especially about having white noise, it's going to add a lot of more harmonics to your sound. So, you, so when you're using filters and moving, moving or doing filter sweeps, you get a lot more effects, a lot more harmonic content to really work with to kind of bring your patches alive. So it's not necessarily just there to sound analog, I guess, but it's more so there to give more additional harmonics to work with within our sound. So with that being said, the next one here is going to be the sub oscillator here. It's going to be a sine wave and it's going to be default down one octave because it's really going to carry that low end there. And then a very important thing here is this knob here. So this is always going to be on direct out for most, most of your patches, mine as well, because if we're using some type of sub oscillator to really carry that low end, we don't want it to go to maybe a filter or FX or something like that because the whole point for this one is I guess in this specific environment is that we want it to carry the low end. Everything above that is going to be kind of texture and sound cool and have these weird effects and modulations and stuff. This one here is just to kind of keep a solid low end that doesn't get filtered or really affected with weird stuff going on. So that's kind of the concept of this sub oscillator. You can try the different shapes here. Um, generally a saw or a, or a sign and a triangle is pretty good for low end. You can use some saws, but keep in mind if you're doing a direct out, you're going to get a lot of those extra harmonics. So it's kind of up to you how you want to route things like that. So with this utility engine, analog two and analog one engaged, it's going to sound like this. <laughs> Now we notice once we hit a note, it's going to be fading away pretty quickly. And the reason for that is this envelope VCA here. So this attack is going to be one millisecond decay 3.07 seconds. No sustain because once we hit the note, we want it to just start the decay phase and go all the way to zero. And then our release is going to be 187. And if you notice here, these curves are a little bit different from two and envelope one, this VCA, and that's done with this decay curve at minus 12.8. So we can always change this curve here. So now let's dive into the effects here because there's kind of a lot of things going on here. So if we turn off our effects completely, it's kind of cool. And then we turn on the effects. And it kind of gives it all that character back. So for the first effect here, I, I ran it into a parametric EQ. And a lot of the things I generally do is take out a lot of this mud that kind of happens down over here. So if we go to one, it's going to highlight this little node right here. And we can see that this is 112 hertz. And you kind of have to like sweep through and kind of find where that mud is and pull that down. And I always recommend once you kind of boost it and you're, you're moving through the frequency things, use the actual gain knob to turn it down because if you use your mouse, you're going to move it a little bit left and right on accident and you're going to lose wherever you found that frequency. So it's always nice to use the actual knob in that situation. So minus 5.11 dB, we're cutting at 112 hertz and the peak, the peak one Q is going to be 1.23. So the tightness, the width of that curve there. Now we're gonna be using this one over here, which is gonna be the high shelf. And this is gonna be at three point, or 3.803 hertz, so almost 4K. And the gain is gonna be 5.65 dB and the Q is 0 0.707. Now the point of this is really to get that, that really top end sizzly stuff back. So we're taking a lot of that low end out and then pushing a lot of that top, you know, I don't know you wanna call it sand stuff, whatever. There's so many weird names for sound, but yeah, hopefully you get the point there. Next, we're going to be using the distortion module on dual fold. This dry wets 38%, the drive 12.7 dB. Now, the cool part about this distortion module is that you also get a filter after the distortion. So we turn this on here on a low pass 12 and make sure it's on post for this situation because we want to have the distortion applied and then we want to have this, uh, this uh, low pass affecting that signal there. <laughs> Now the cutoff here is going to be 8.2 or 8.207 hertz, so a little over 8K, and then the resonance 3.39, so we can see this little bump right here. And then I added another EQ because Pigments is awesome and you can do so many different things with their modules and how you how you lay them in. So this one is basically just going to be pushing a little bit more of that top end, but this one's going to be a little bit lower than this one. And if we look at this high shelf here, we can see that the gain's 5.65, the uh, it's selected here. There we go. And then the frequency is at 1000 and then the high Q is at 0.707. So we're really just pushing this right here at about, what is that? 1000 Hertz. So you have to drag this knob all the way to the left. It kind of looks like it's off, but it's just, that's how we have to move it there. And moving on from there, FXB. So 
just so we know, this EQ is getting fed into the distortion, this, the distortion is getting fed into the next EQ, and then the output of this is going to the FXB, which is kind of going left to right as far as signal flow goes. Now for the multi-filter here, we're going to be using a low pass 12, and this is kind of just taming a little bit of that top end stuff there. The cutoff seven about 7K, the Q 0.947. And a little bit of tape echo. This one's actually kind of cool. A small amount, 20% of the dry wet there. The timing, one over four. The fine in the middle. Input volume in the center. Intensity, 0.350. And the stereo spread, 0.084. And then the last one here is going to be the reverb, and it's going to be 25% here. The decay straight up kind of in the middle, 0 0.460. Pre-delay, 20 milliseconds, size 1. Stereo width all the way to the right at 0.5. High, press, high pass frequency, we're cutting off from 200 below. And then the low pass is going to be at the default 15K, and then the dampening at 1. So that's basically it for the effects banks. We do have stuff on our aux here, but as we can see here, we're not sending anything to it. So this is basically not being used. So now the fun part really here is going to be in this sequencer here. So if we turn this back on, we have an arpeggiator. So basically this ARP is gonna be down mode. So whatever chord you play, it's gonna be playing your notes in a downward fa fashion. So from the higher notes to the lower notes and then repeating. Now, the cool part about this, this is gonna be 16 steps here and we're gonna be using, utilizing a lot of the random stuff. So over here on the left, we're gonna have the randomizing set to auto regen one bar. And if you're unfamiliar with how this works, I, did, I just finished the video for the sequencer tab. So hopefully that'll clear some of the stuff up here. So with that being said, we have this rate going on here for 1 over 16, and we're adding a little bit of swing to it to kind of give, give it a little bit more of a rhythmic feel. It kind of adds a really cool vibe to it. Now, with this random here, every time a bar passes, it's going to give us a random value for whatever we have randomized. So what do we have randomized? So nothing for velocity, nothing for the octave, nothing for the trig probability, but we do have a little bit for the gate length and for the slide. So as you can kind of see, it's kind of might be hard to see, but where this blue line is, there's a little bit of gray on the top and the bottom, and that's going to be kind of the scope of the randomness here. So this is at 20.4%, and especially with gate length, small values are, are ideal to use. And then also for the slide, 10.8, so just a little bit of slide for the notes to kind of slide into each other at different values. Now, every time the bar completes, it's going to get a whole new set of values. <laughs> So every single bar, it's going to randomize how long these notes are going to be sustained for and so on and so forth. So we can kind of play a lot of the same notes over and over without it getting too boring. And the slide's also going to be randomized as well. So very cool stuff here. One last thing I forgot to mention here for our envelopes before we dive into the cooler stuff here is we have this mod amount over here. So whenever we select our envelopes, just in case we want to see what's what's being modulated, we'll select our, or our uh, envelope two. And then we have our view here. So we talked about the filter one cutoff, the filter two cutoff, and then this mod amount here. So we're going to be using a little bit of FM. So if we hit this note, we can see how this waveform starts to change. Now, if we follow this line here, this is getting FM'd from the source that's oscillator number three, which is this guy that's up 12 semitones to one octave. I should have mentioned that earlier, but yes, better late than never, right? So with this oscillator number three here, it's going to be FMing number one, which is only this FM here, which is lit up. It doesn't really even matter because it's the only one in, uh, in use right now. So we can see that being wiggling, wiggling here pretty fast here, a small amount, 0.14, which gives a nice little uh, texture to it, I suppose. All right, so that's that patch in a nutshell. If you'd like to, f to get this patch for free without having to adjust all these settings, there's a free link in the video description below and it can be yours for the price of a click. So pretty cool. Now moving on to the cooler stuff here in the session. So what I did want to talk about is on this channel strip for, these, for the pigments here, I have an EQ, which is cool, whatever. We're just kind of like cutting off some low ends, a little bit of mud and kind of boosting the highs, kind of normal stuff here to kind of clean up the sound within this mix here. Now, if we look at pigments here, we see it's routed to our external Valhalla reverb, which I normally do. However, there's a little twist to it. 
if we click this little drop down menu here, I've automated this send knob here. So what's happening is on certain spots of this song, this knob here is going to be throwing a lot of reverb into the mix and then pulling it back. So it kind of gives a huge pop kind of feeling, you know, boom kind of kind of feel. You might have missed this on, on the first time, but take a listen to it while we play with this. And you can also watch the knob and see how it reacts here. And I did it on certain spots where we have our our main note, it's kind of playing, and then we add a second one that's kind of doing two different notes, and then once it goes back to the regular note, it does that whole big thing, kind of, you know, resets it a little bit, if you if you will. So that's the idea behind this. So check this out here once it passes these little spikes. <laughs> So if you kind of mute these other drums here and kind of just listen to it. It's almost like someone hit something really loud, really reverby in the background. It kind of just makes the mix really huge. But it's one of those things that you have to kind of use quickly and sparingly because that can quickly dirty up your mix. So there's a little spike here and then it drops back down to its regular value. <laughs> And then here's two back to back. And then the last two kind of back to back here as well on the beats. So a cool little effect there too. You can kind of use this to really, really enhance some, maybe some drops or something like that, or really emphasize certain pot spots of the song. So I thought I'd mention that here because it kind of worked out really cool with the song. And then for this other drum stuff here, we're using drum max. They have a lot of cool sounds under their uh, different industrial sounds. So I thought I would mention that as well. And yeah, that's, uh, that's dark acid arp in a nutshell. Like I said, this one took a weird life on its own. So with that being said, let's place out with dark acid arp while we look at this nice render here that I finally finished in time for this week. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.